quality aspect was very critical uh, that needs to be captured very well. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Augusto Amiro. Uh, he's from University of Sao Paulo. Please, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes. Sources of tomatoes. Okay. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Gulati, for the presentation. I'll talk about uh, research contributions uh, to estimation of tomato post-harvest losses in Brazil. Actually, I'll talk about three cases that we, two, three research that we've been done in Brazil. Uh, just some uh, figures about, and information about uh, tomato. Everybody may know that tomato is very perishable, almost nine, or 95% of water, composed by water, so it's very perishable, very sensible. And all the supply chain is very complex, uh, maybe, uh, mainly because of this aspect. These are some figures of Brazil. We have, we produce uh, more than four uh, million tons of tomato. This including for processing, industrial processing, and also for uh, fresh consumption, for table consumption, as we call, we say there. We grow more or less uh, 63,000 hectares, and our revenue per year is more or less 2.5 billion for the whole uh, tomato industry in the country. Uh, we can say that we have two subsystems that I, I've already mentioned, the fresh consumption, with the, sorry, the consumption in natura, okay, and the industrial process for producing of sauce, extra extracts, pulps, ketchups, juices, and et cetera. Actually, Brazil is the 80th uh, largest tomato producers, uh, producer of, of the world nowadays. Uh, so the objective is to show, uh, uh, to present some progress made in recent years related to methods of estimation of post-harvest loss of tomato in our country. So I'll talk about three, three cases, three papers. The first one, we measured the economic effects of post-harvesting post -harvesting losses uh, for the fresh consumption tomato. Uh, through a nonlinear programming techniques, we uh, adjust a um, partial equilibrium model with the curves of uh, uh, supply and demand, uh, considering a very specific region. The second one, we estimate the percentage weight loss for different waiting times between harvest and processing uh, using uh, econometric models. Uh, one of the main problem is the, the lag that we have uh, among the harvest and the processing. We have a lot of problems during all this transport and logistic uh, process. And the third one is related to this one, or the same research, but we did different methods. We we view the deterministic simulation mathematical model to map the whole process uh, from the field to the, to the facility, okay, aiming exactly to estimate the financial gains. And using this method, we could estimate, we could simulate uh, how much we could gain if we do some, um, some better practice in the, in the process. So, Going to the point directly, these are the main results for the P1, the first, uh, the first research. Uh, surprising or not, we, we, we could see that, that post-harvest post loss along the chain, not in the field, but along the chain, considering commercialization and transport logistics, we could see that it was benef beneficial for the producer because he can he could see his, uh, his um, income increased with those losses, okay? Uh, but for the middleman, the middleman is what we call in Brazil, atravessador is the guy that, you know, put the, the parts together, the commercial part. Uh, for the middleman, uh, for him, it was indifferent, the increases of loss, because they sell in volume, they sell in number of boxes, not in weight, so, we, um, we can see many uh, losses in weight, so, so there's no problem if he commercialize in volumes. And for retailers, retailers, the losses uh, were, not, were also not interesting because they buy in volume and also sell 
uh, in weight. So he, uh, he can give a lot, he has a lot of, um, of losses. He can feel those, those losses. And finally, for, for the consumer, this was a problem. The consumer was really very prejudiced because of those losses because uh, he can feel, you know, a, a reduction in the amount supplied and also some increase in, uh, increasing in those prices. So this mapping was the main result of the, the first paper, the first research. Going to the second one, we test different models, econo econometric models, you know, to try to adjust, uh, to adjust considering uh, many types of, of models simple variables, square and cross ones, and we try to look for, for the best one, considering uh, that losses in percentual was the dependent variable, and other variables was the explicative, uh, where the explicative variables, the independent one. So in general, for the, the models, we could see a, a regression coefficient between 60, uh, 57 and 66, so it was very, not very, but good uh, adjustments. In most of the models, the, coef the coefficient estimated was, had, you know, the test here bad uh, enough for 5% of significance. And let me show the main one. Uh, just, uh, an, I think this is an interesting point. This is considering a, a very large facility in Brazil for t processing tomato. This is the problem of the kiwi. So here we can see the number of trucks that we have considering the time of, let me put some words in English is better, the time of the day from the zero hour to, the, to midnight. So here we have the average number of trucks in the kiwi. So waiting in the facility to be processed. So we, we lost a lot of things with all this, uh, this problem of many times waiting for, for reception. But in, in the peak of the, the day, it's more or less in the night, we, have, we can reach almost 77 trucks waiting to be processed in the, the facility. Okay, this is one of the main points that brings all those, those losses. So these are uh, seven of the main models. I will be very quickly here and talk about the second one. So as I told, the dependent variable is the percentage losses. And here we consider some variables. Uh, time in boxes, this was in a facility that used mostly um, manual uh, harvest. Nowadays in Brazil, we have, we have an improvement us using machine to, to, to harvest. Tomato, but even nowadays we still have a loss of a lot of uh, manual, you know, human harvest. And that time in this this facility, we consider uh, manual uh, harvest. So the people they pick the fruit, put in the box, and the box is still waits for many time in the field before getting put into to, uh, inside the truck. So this is time in the box, time in the truck. The weight, you know, the weight depending on how many. You know the weight, uh, the the height of tomatoes that you you put in the in the truck, and then we have you have here we have the coefficients and the, the tests and things like that. I just uh, summarize this, showing this this figure. So if we consider we, we consider the percentage of loss in function of time, okay, we can have something like this, and just we can say that each hour waiting in somewhere in the field or in the truck or in the facility, we lose something around 0.17 percentual points for each hour that we, we, we have to wait. And it's very normal in Brazil to wait 12 hours, 20, 24, and things like that. So it's really a problem. Uh, going to the, the third one and the last one, uh, the simulation model of supply, log uh, supply logistics allowed to con conclude that losses could be reduced from the current more than two. They had this facility that we study, this uh, company, they has, has something like before two and three percent of losses, of weight losses of tomato. And we could see that if we do some practice, we could reduce this for more than one percent. So it could be 
interesting and was not very complex uh, uh, practice. Very simple practice could give, could bring them very good uh, results. Um, one problem that they have is that even with all those kiwis, were it was very common to to have no raw material to be processed, so they have to stop the very big facilities, and this is a a very huge problem from that. So this the the opportunity cost of having to stop the facility is a problem from them for them. Uh, so for that facility, they processed around three hundred and thirty thousand per season of tomatoes. These very easy uh, measures could reduce, for example, of 2.3 million per season. Uh, that was the figure that we found using uh, this, the model to simulate what would happen with those practice. This is some information about detailed information, but I'm not going to that. So I think that's it. If you are interested in those three papers, they are in Portuguese, sorry, but we're we'll happy to, to send to you. You just have to, to send me an email and can, I can think or send Any to you. Yes, the, the when it was where? where? It was the facility of Unilever Best Food, nowadays is Cargill, is in Goiânia. Goiânia is the largest Brazilian facility of tomato. Uh, sorry, I was talking about the, the paper two and three, was the processing one. The first one was in Hawaii City, was close to Piracicaba, and just we studied the, the, the case of Hawaii, is a, is a Aguaí, Aguaí City, it's the largest producer in Sao Paulo state of tomato, fresh tomato, and we analyzed the case for selling to Piracicaba, Seasa. Yeah, because in Rio de Janeiro we have uh, different conditions. Yeah, maybe. Okay, uh, we can talk after, okay? Cool. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.